Hi everybody, it's Faith from Creative Bug coming at you live like we do every Thursday. Great news, my shirt's covered in dachshunds. I have a, a great project today that is perfect for these cold winter months, DIY lotion bars. And if you've never made lotion bars or if you've never even used lotion bars, they're similar to uh, Lush's massage bars. They're solid at room temperature and they are perfect for uh, your carry-on luggage if you want to bring some lotion on the airplane but you're worried that uh, TSA is going to get all riled up um, about your very large bottle of lotion. I also um, I like to swim at the Y. It's my favorite place in the world because it's crazy there. Um, and I always bring a lotion bar in my bag because who knows what's going to happen to my bottle of lotion. It might explode all over my swim cap and then it makes it so slippery and really difficult to put on. And you don't want those things slingshotting across the locker room because it's a locker room. The supplies you'll need are a silicone mold, or you can use a cupcake mold. I got this from uh, Our Lady of Amazon. It was probably 10 bucks. And if you use a cupcake mold, you're going to want to line those with cupcake wrappers, or you can use a loaf pan and you'll just be slicing it. You'll also need some a little bit more obscure materials, shea butter. 100% um, pure, unrefined, and raw. You can find these at an African market or also online. Mango butter, or you can um, you can use coconut oil. But I thought mango butter would be really fun and delicious. Spoiler alert: it's not delicious. Don't taste it. Ew, yuck, gross. You'll also need some beeswax. This is uh, definitely a do as I say, not as I do situation. I got the bar of beeswax and grated it. Um, I lost a bit of finger, um, sadly. And um, it, it's just, it's very labor intensive and you kind of ruin your grater. And so you can, it comes in pellets and pellets are just as easy. You also need some essential oils, a double boiler. Um, this is prematurely steaming. I hope I look really spooky behind these mists of steam on the double boiler. Um, and the essential oils, you'll just use your, um, whatever blend you are currently digging. Look at me assuming that everyone has an essential oil blend that they're currently digging. You can start simple with um, some lavender, orange oil, peppermint, Cedar, people really seem to jive with those. Maybe you're a wild and crazy patchouli person. Um, if you're watching Creative Bug, you probably are. And um, we'll be using a ratio of one to one to one, shea butter, beeswax, and mango butter. You um, can swap out both the shea butter and the mango butter f for uh, coconut oil. Heavens to Betsy, this really is going off here. But you're going to want to make sure you have the beeswax. I also tried to skimp on the beeswax because I was bleeding and didn't want to grate any more of it. And then the resulting bars were extra oily and liquidy. So if you want them to be nice and firm, you're going to want to um, make sure you have as much beeswax as you do the other, um, the other two oils. I also, one of my favorite craft tools is a kitchen scale. They're very inexpensive. You can find them at Bed Bath & Beyond or get a whole bunch online. I swear to you, I tried for a really long time to like stand on the scale and then like hold the beeswax and be like, oh, it says it's a pound. This must be a pound of beeswax. Don't be a faith. Um, <laughs> be a scale user. So we're going to use equal portions. A lot of the recipes I've seen online too have said one cup each of beeswax, shea butter, and mango butter, but I find that that really varies a lot, especially if you have this big frothy mess of beeswax and finger, um, you're gonna want to weigh it out to make sure you have equal proportions. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna preheat our double boiler, even though you already saw it, you know it's preheated. Um, you'll want an inch of water, and then this does not have any water in it, that's really important. Inch of water in the bottom, boiling, and it's heating it up. Um, if you, you could use a mason jar, like a glass mason jar in 
um, a bigger bowl of water, but the double boiler is really handy. Um, and I'm going to start with um, a cup of the mango butter. Or actually, I'm going to start with a half of a pound of the mango butter. It was near blasphemy. So I'm laying down this parchment paper and we're tearing it, which is just resetting it to zero. And I'm going to start off with about a cup. This mango butter has the consistency of sugar cookie dough. Doesn't taste like sugar cookie dough. I can't possibly be the only person who tastes their uh, craft supplies. If I'm not, please let me know. If I am, don't tell me. I don't need to know. It really, it has <laughs> the most amazing texture. It's real messy, and I love that part. This is it's a pretty simple craft, because um, it's just about the measuring, and the balance, and the proportion. So we have about a cup, and it's just about a half a pound. Perfect. Bravo. Congratulations to me. I'm putting this in the double boiler. And then I'm going to get the same amount of shea butter. Also, we are live, so feel free to write in with any questions or comments. I love to hear um, if you've made these projects already or if you have you even heard of lotion bars. I did, my poor coworkers, Anytime that people would walk by the table and say, ooh, what are you making? I, I, would, I would have to rub it on them, um, which now that I'm saying it out loud might be an HR violation, but um, I wanted to show them you know, how it works. It's like a lotion. It also, it sinks into the skin really nicely. And if I haven't made it clear already by my affection for patchouli and the YMCA, um, I'm a full-blown hippy-dippy, lady. Um, I like knowing what's in my body products and bath products and have been um, looking into clean beauty. And while you can find um, a lot of companies that don't have additives in their products, um, you could just make it from scratch yourself and then you know exactly what's in it. And I really like the balance of shea butter and mango butter. It goes on greasy. I, I will admit that. But then it... Um, it quickly sinks into the skin. You'll also probably want a, um, a knife for your shea butter, because um, it's not crumbling as delicately as the mango butter was. Oh my gosh, and the Band-Aid's coming off. You're gonna see my greater wound. I do have those steel gloves that I feel like they might use when they feed sharks. Um, I use those for grating things at home. Um, it's, it's just like a lack of attention. Um, this actually happened because I was grading the beeswax and I had to ask Taryn what song the grading sounded like. It was like the beginning of, I'm not going to sing it. I, I always make the mistake and do and then watch it later. And I'm so upset for everybody who had to watch at home. Um, but I think it was the beginning of Edward Scissorhands. And then of course I cut my hand. So we're at a half a pound of this as well. I'm going to add it to my double boiler. One thing that did make me feel better about my um, cheese grater wound is our, our company uh, founder confessed that she had a um, Oh. A mandolin slicer? Oh, yes, an old mandolin slicer wound, but we don't bring that up because that was very, <laughs> that was scarifying. But a, um, a tinfoil, a recent tinfoil wound, because the kitchen is a dangerous place. Now, the final, here's our beeswax. I'm not going to tear out this thing because I don't, the, it really grows and it's very dramatic. And I obviously have feelings about the beeswax. Yes, Ellie? We have Phil wants to know, is this safe to use on your lips? Absolutely, Phil. You would make sure you pour this into a tin 
and not necessarily um, a bar because then you would be rubbing it on your lips. But if you have those, um, what are those circle lip balms, the EOS, if you use those up, you can pour this into those and um, it works perfectly. So that's a great question. Is it safe to use on your lips? Absolutely. You will want to check on the oils you use. Um, some are definitely more face friendly than others, but if you just want like a steady winter balm and don't even want to add anything, like any oils, and you just want moisturizing power, uh, this should work beautifully. Next question comes from Sybil, and Sybil wants to know, are you going to add color? The next question comes from Sybil. Sybil wants to know, am I going to add color? That's a great question, Sybil. I have seen people make these with um, a little bit of mica powder, if you want like a shimmer, or even people who use cocoa powder to act as a bronzing bar. I personally am not going to add color. I feel like that's too risky for someone of my clumsy countenance. But I suppose you could use, um, yeah, if you wanted to make it into lip balm, you could add something rosy and that would be really pretty. Great question, thank you so much. And now we're just waiting for um, this all to melt down. This should take about four more minutes. Um, so let me tell you about my blend that I'm using. I'm very excited about um, the cedarwood oil and frankincense is amazing for skincare products. Yes, it smells great, but it's also really good for uh, allegedly reducing free radicals. I had seen in my research um, a lot of recipes online. There is one for gold, frankincense, and myrrh bars which got me so excited because I know I did Bible crafts growing up. It usually involves stitching around the edge of a sheep, but you could do like gold frankincense and myrrh bars. You could do Lot's wife look back and turn into a pillar of salt scrub. You could even do Bible bath. That was bubble bath. <laughs> if you have more ideas for me for this um, Bible themed body, <laughs> I was going to call it a body party. Um, Bible, Bible themed body crafts, uh, please let me know. Because I sure could have used them when I was a Bible crafting youth. And this would have been a lot more glamorous than those uh, fish and loaves prints. Vacation Bible body. Vacation Bible body. B Vacation Bible body butter. See? That's. <laughs> That's if you add a bit more shea butter and then you whip it before pour pouring it into molds, but that's for a different live shoot. Also one where Courtney's away, because I don't know if you've noticed, when Courtney's not here is when I get real messy um, because she's not here to look ever so slightly disappointed at my trail of debris. Um, we miss you, Courtney. Sorry in advance for the mess. Courtney's out of town this weekend. And we're still waiting for this all to melt. And once it melts, you can see it on this camera. It looks, it looks like um, risotto, but it'll be perfectly clear once the wax is all melted. I'm going to add just a bit more. And one thing that's super fun about, so of course I, I exhaustively researched these crafts we were working on and try a bunch of different recipes and a bunch of materials and see what I like the best. But if you've been to a Lush, they have those great bath bombs. They have a lot of videos online on how they make their product and it actually gives you a whole lot of respect for them because they have these big machines and then everyone who makes them is like really cool and tattooed and like, like hip, but also they're handling like 30 gallons of purple glitter. Um, th it's a really fun late night YouTube binge um, telling so many secrets about myself today. Um, and their lotion bars have a lot more additives in them. But really, the sky's the limit. And like the more you nerd out, the more exciting you can make these lotion bars. Um, you could use vitamin E oil up to a tablespoon for extra healing. That would definitely be great for the lip balm. Um, you could use tea tree oil. If you wanted to make like a, um, a deodorant bar, I was going to get some rose essential oil, but that's very expensive. Um, 
Start small with essential oils and get like one bottle at a time because they are a little pricey and they will, um, but they add up, you know? Treat, treat yourself, and if you treat yourself enough, then you have a large pouch that says love across the front and glitter letters that's full of um, four different kinds of clary sage. Diane is just joining us and she wants to know what's in the pot. Great timing, Diane. It's finally looking like it's supposed to. I was panicking for a minute there. <laughs> we have equal parts by weight of beeswax, mango butter, and shea butter. If you can't access mango butter, you're going to want to replace that with coconut oil. Um, but that is easily available on Amazon. So now we're going to, I have these two great molds. Um, these are for our big honkin' bars. So this is like if you really like someone and you want to give them a lovely present. I'm going to use this one too. Oh, how many of you panicked when I reached over the, <laughs> the hot um, bubbling pot just now? Sorry to make you worry. And by you, I mean mom. Sorry to make you worry, mom. My mom is currently with my little sisters in Jackson Hole where it's 30 degrees and um, mom, if you get too cold, you should come here. It's 63 degrees. Um, so I have this tray just so that I can put this on because once it's full of the hot molten, malt, there's no tea at the end of it. Molten, thank you, Allie. Um, our molten butter mixture, we're gonna want this to be well supported and I'm going to turn off the heat. I'm going to take it off the heat, actually. I'll leave it on the heat because then it's off camera and you can't see these last few uh, melting beautifully. But now I'm going to add my oil. And for this amount, so if you're using one cup each, you'll want between 60 and 90 drops of oil. Now, I like to do my blends ahead of time in a little, um, in, in, in a separate container because, like, I had too much Lang Lang or Ylang Ylang. I always get confused with those whys. Um, and so then I had to balance it out a little bit more. So before you add it directly to the pot, make your blend separately. And as it is cooling, we'll let this cool for about 30 seconds. Um, I'm going to add my essential oils and slowly blend. I, I was trying to be, um, I was over ambitious earlier and I had poured the mixture into the molds and then put the drops into the individual molds so that I could like capitalize and have as many different blends as I could. Um, but I think that was a little impractical and then it concentrates the oils in the middle of the bar and by then you've already used a lot of it. So, you know, just, just grow up and put them all in here before you pour them into the molds. The molds don't need any special treatment. Um, and if you are using a smaller amount or if you have a bigger one of these, this is a really great piece of equipment to melt stuff in and then it has these spouts you can pour. Um, I'm just gonna use um, a, a, a quick hand. Sometimes when my boyfriend is pouring boiling water into the sink and I'll do it really gently and then it'll fall to the ground and I usually end up shouting at him, commit, commit, which is not the thing you should shout at someone pouring boiling water. He, he loves it. Okay, and I don't want any water to get into my, into my molds. Another great thing about these lotion bars is if you were to make actual lotion, there needs to be an emulsification process and that can be a bit trickier. So this is really, if you're like getting into DIY lotions, this is the way to do it, I'm telling you. And these will last for a really long time, like a year easy. I think I have enough to make two more of these big ones, but remember how I mentioned, uh, I was going to say harassing, but the truth of the matter is educating my coworkers on the luxuries of body butter. So I'm going to use this silicone mold, and this is something that you can find um, in like the cupcake section or the cake section of your Joanne. Um, these are used, yeah, they're Walton brand, so they're 
food grade. And I'm going to use these so that everyone gets a lotion bar. And then I'll hand them out like Oprah and say, you get a lotion bar and you get a lotion bar. Maybe the trickiest part of this whole process is making sure there's enough space in your refrigerator so that they can all cool. My lotion bars uh, kept getting knocked into by a bottle of champagne because we are so fancy here um, in Craft Town. And make sure you use up every last bit because you'll find yourself, if you or me, like scraping it up and casually rubbing it into your cuticles. Like it's all very useful. And if you just pour it out, that's like, that's like so much dry skin, you don't have to suffer. And it's better to underfill than to overfill your molds. This is a, do as I say, not as I do moment. Cause look at this guy, he's, he's ready to just fall over. This will be fine um, once it has cooled and I'll be able to just scrape off the edge. So now we stick this in the refrigerator. Don't you wish you could watch me like carry these down the stairs and then go into the fridge and then the camera stays in the fridge and you're like, what even happened to Creative Bug? It's crazy over there. Sorry, not this time around, but I can show you what it looks like when you pop them out of the molds. This is, this is the real exciting part. This is the part you've been waiting for. Sometimes when I do these demos, I'll see later people write in the comments, will you just show us already? And I, it's my favorite thing because I think, no, you have to wait until the end because it's the best part, aside from using it and using it with other people. So the molds pop out really simply. They just, you, th that's why I like these flexible ones. You just push them up from the bottom and look how lovely they are. They're so pretty. They look basically edible. This one has, I had to take a picture from my Instagram, of course. So this one's a little bit duller, but when they're fresh out of the, the mold, they're really shiny and really beautiful and really useful. Um, if you do end up making this, please send us a photo, put it on Instagram, tag us at creative bug. Um, we'd love to see your work. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next week.